Well, here we are on September 12th, 2012. Uh, we're at the uh, Pleasant Street Center. Uh, we're going to have a little discussion, a little lunch and learn. Uh, in, uh, we're talking to Officer Jim Collins about scams, about basic safety stuff uh, here in Reading. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Pleasant Street Center. For those that haven't had the opportunity to meet yet, my name is Jane Burns, and I'm the Elder Services Administrator for the Town of Reading. I want to welcome you all here today. This is our Lunch and Learn series. I believe this is about the sixth in the series that we have had with various topics ranging from the new town manager to kick bites and uh, the town planner. And today, um, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Community Services Officer Jimmy Collins. And we've invited him here today to talk about various issues affecting seniors within the community, whether it be fraud or staying safe or those annoying phone calls you get or how to protect yourself. So he's going to talk with us a little bit about various topics that he feels he wants to get you to know. But also he's here to answer any questions you may have about safety and the town and how the police can help you and how you can help the police. So everyone, please welcome our public safety officer, Jim Collins. Thank you. I see a familiar face out here. I usually run the hammer meeting dinner that we have here. It is coming up in uh, October, so I'll be looking forward to uh, participating in that again. Uh, and I want to thank you for uh, allowing me to speak today. There's a few things I want to talk about that, uh, that affect people as we get older. Uh, and one is, we want you to feel safe in your homes, your apartments, or wherever you stay. So you need to be diligent in, in what you're doing at your house. Keep an eye out and, and just feel safe. Now, if you ever have any problems whatsoever, you just pick up the phone and dial 911 and uh, we'll be there in a sh uh, short period of time. One of the other things I'm going to talk about, it affects a lot of people, not just the elderly, but uh, the scams, phone scams, computer scams, I don't know how many use computers, but there's, there's a lot of scams out there. So I want to throw a couple, couple by you uh, so you understand what, what you can do when you hear some of these scenarios. There are a lot of bad people out there, and they're going to try to separate your money from you and put it in their own pocket. So I'm going to throw a couple of scams by you. One of them is, uh, let's say, a driveway scam. They'll come up and they'll knock on your door, and if you own your own house, and they'll say, uh, we want to work in your driveway. There'll be a couple of uh, be a couple of different people. And what they do is they distract you. One person will be trying to get outside, show you the problems you have in your driveway. Well, it could be anything else. It could be your roof. Any that type of thing that deals with working with your house. And they'll distract you. And the second person will get inside your house and they'll, they'll rob you. They'll take everything you felt of value and you'll be in trouble. Okay, so if someone comes to your house and wants you to uh, do work in your house and try to get you outside, shut the door and call 911. If you want work done in your house, you call people and you have them come to your house. That's how you should do it. Okay? You know, contact a family member or contact somebody you know, a neighbor who's had work done. But don't allow people to come to your house, knock on your door, and ask to do work because the chances are they're going to try to take what's yours. I was wrong, so I know. Okay. A second scheme that's going on especially affects. Uh, grandparents. What, what's been happening uh, is the beginning grandparents are beginning to call saying their grandchild has been injured and that uh, you need to send money down to him 
and so they can uh, get medical help and, and get yeah, get contacts for the people that come down. But what they do is they scare you because who, who doesn't care about grandchildren and children? Yes, the first thing you do is react in a positive manner. I'm going to I'm going to help I'm going to help my grandson. I'm going to help my granddaughter, and they tell you to send money down to them. And what is this? It's an all and it's, it's, it's one that's worked several times here in Reading and all over the state. So you want to be aware of that. Okay? If you use your computer, somehow they plant a virus in your computer. When you click on a certain site or, or you click on an email that you don't know about, it pops up. I've seen this several times. It pops up. They'll say, Homeland Security, you have violated you know, some law or some sort of uh, you know, you've got a threat. And they tell you to get rid of this screen. Your computer, is, you, you can't move it off the screen. It's dead. So the virus is just rendered your, your, your computer you know, useless. But they tell you to send. Five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, three hundred dollars to get your, your computer fixed, but bring it to like a Rite Aid, or a Walmart, or a CVS, a ridiculous store for people again, because they see the Homeland Security and it's in a, a very official-looking page, you know, and it could scare you, you know, but you, what you got to do is ignore it, and unfortunately, you got to bring your computer down to get it fixed and cleaned up and get rid of the virus. You know, so if you see an email and you don't know what it's about, just delete it. I don't know how many use computers. Many of you use your computers? Yeah, use a few people use your computers. You know, uh, also when you're on the computers, if you get, uh, it's an official, another one I've seen, it's an official looking bank, like a Bank of America, whatever bank you use, page, and it looks authentic. And they ask you to give them your banking information, your credit card, your date of birth, your social security, because they've been breached. Don't do that. The banks will never ask you online to give you social security number, to give you date of birth. They'll never do that. You know? So you need to, if you see that, exit out. So those are three or four of the scams that, and they work, you know, they, they really do work, and people fall for it. If you see anything, if you get anything in the mail, and it comes from out of this country, it comes from Africa, it comes from South America, you know, the Middle East, the chances are 99%, 0.9, it's a scam. Just don't do anything with it, get rid of it. Just exit up. You know? You'll get phone calls. And, and these people are very pushy sometimes. And they'll, they'll push so hard, they make you believe that they're real. They're not. So on the phone, never give up anything of your personal information. Because I can guarantee you, It'll come back to haunt you, and you'll have to go through a lot of steps to get your money back. Mm -hmm. Anyone have any questions about scams? Or, or, I, uh, I have a question. Sure. Um, there's, I have seen something uh, in an email that said, I have uh, a relative in Nigeria. Uh, I found out that he's won the lottery, and if I just uh, call him, maybe I can get part of my inheritance. Uh, have you heard anything about that? Sure. That's a good one, Mr. Wall. What happens is they, don't get, they, they send you something, they tell you you won, uh, let's say, $100,000. But to collect your $100,000, you need to send them $2,500. So people do it. They send them the $2,500, and before they know it, they're out to $2,500. And there's not much you can do it all because they sent to a, uh, you know, a P.O. box 
or a place that's really not fictional, and the money's the money's gone. And now that that's a very good one. I forgot about that. Thank you for reminding me of that. That's that's a that is one that's worked here several times. Yes, sir. Uh, when they pulled on me, uh, the uh, company called me, and they're very professional. And they say, your credit card company has had a contact you to lower your interest rate to 1.9%. Yeah. When you call the, the card that they're talking about, they know nothing about it. They say, we have nothing to do with that. We never call you to lower the interest rate. So that's kind of what we call fishing. So what they're doing is it's like you're throwing the line in the water. That's what they're doing. They're throwing the line in the water. And they're going to try to see what type of personal information they can get for you. So they're just, they're just throwing it in, and if you say, oh, well, in the next question, if you gave something to them, what's your date of birth, what's your social security number, what's your bank account, the next thing you know, the ball's rolling, it, and you're, in, you're, you're ending up, uh, you know, in trouble. Right. I, uh, I was reading in a magazine uh, this new technology about that when uh, people get off the train, the commuter rail, and they get ah! home, and uh, that uh, it's kind of a safety device. It's like a GPS that people can wear on their person so that if any kind of abduction should happen or you, you end up being bodily taken where you don't want to be taken, that, uh, that this GPS that you're wearing on your body will actually alert the police uh, to your exact whereabouts. And I read about this technology, uh, you know, a while ago, and I, I thought it sounded pretty good. Have you ever heard of something like that? I would love uh, to have something like this because I use the public transportation all the time. I park my car, then take the train, um, and you know, I. Uh, I, I might be vulnerable because of my age and um, sort of my stature, and I was just wondering if you ever heard of anything like that because I think it's a wonderful uh, technology. Well, I haven't heard uh, of anything exactly like that, but what I have heard, what I have heard is, like for Alzheimer's patients, they have a tracking device, so it wouldn't surprise me <coughs> that uh, they have come up with something like that. Uh, to be able to track people uh, if they're uh, if so if they're taken or they're lost or anything along that line. Jane, do you have something? I do. I can address that. A uh, LoJack, the same folks that do the LoJack for the cars, <coughs> they do that for people now. And like Officer Collins said, it's mostly used um, for elders with uh, Alzheimer's or dementia. And also for children uh, with um, neurological disabilities like autism, they will do that. Um, so LoJack makes a device such as that, which is a GPS that you wear. And also a couple of the other lifeline type uh, uh, companies make it. There's a couple of different ones that, much like a lifeline, if you fall and you push the button, it contacts uh, in a center that will contact the police or fire. Uh, these companies are also now coming out with the technology that it also will have a GPS. And again, it's typically used with Alzheimer's and dementia where if you are lost or if you get confused and you get lost or if you find yourself in a difficult predicament, if you push the button or the watch, it, it will, it's a GPS, and again, the call center will notify the police of your whereabouts. So there's a couple of different options out there. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I get a telephone maybe once or twice a day, and I pick up the phone, and nobody answers, and I say hello, hello, hello about three times, and then I just hang up. Yeah. I don't know what that would be. Every day I get either one or two calls. Well, sometimes, and I'm not saying this is uh, in your case, sometimes uh, telemarketing, they don't shut numbers off and then they just keep ringing the same number even though they have nothing to say. But you're doing the right thing, hang up and just disregard it. It's, it's, it's an annoyance. Yeah. yeah, it's an annoyance to answer the phone if you're watching uh, your favorite show or you're taking a nap. But, uh, you know, that's that's what you want to do. Thank you. Yes, sir. 
I experience the same thing she does. I answer my phone and there's no one there. I think that there's probably companies that use the phone, box, uh, uh, phone book to uh, call people with landlines. And you know, uh, Verizon and other local phone companies charge $5 a month to uh, have your name and address unlisted. You have to, have to pay to be unlisted. It's, it, it should be the opposite. It's so crazy that the phone company wants to make money on, on asking you to, you know, on, on our desire to not be listed. It seems like it should be the opposite. But I, I, I uh, experience the same thing that you do. It's quite annoying. Yes, it's uh, very annoying. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I really think it's terrible that, they, that the, I have to pay five dollars a month in order to maybe make these phone calls stop. And that it's probably going to guarantee they'll stop either. either. The question was, what happens when the phone rings and nobody is on the other on the other end? It happens a lot to to all of us. And the the advice was to. Uh, simply hang up the phone. Now, if, if, if these phone calls happen in the middle of the night, then we can try to address that a little bit better. Because they, that time of day kind of matters. You just hang up. But if it's in the middle of the night, we can uh, contact the phone company and do it through the annoyance phone bureau. But there's a few steps you have to take. So if you ever get stuck doing that, call down to the station. If you get your phone calls consistently, Call, come to the, call the station or come to the station, and we'll help you, uh, you know, contact them. Officer, can you help us a little bit as well with issues like basic safety uh, issues, when to call 911? For example, if something's happening outside my house uh, and I'm concerned about it, what do I do? Well, if, if there's any doubt in your mind that something's not right, even if the, the slightest doubt in your mind, Call 911. You know, I, like when I talk to the kids, the, the, the young kids, I tell them, if you think something's wrong, that's good enough for us. You know, don't be pranking. You know what I mean? Like some kids do. I know anyone here is going to prank, but you know, I tell the kids, if, if you see something that you believe is wrong, and your and your feelings are genuine that there's something wrong, then pick up that phone and call. Cause we'll come, and no one's going to say anything. You know. No matter what it is, maybe you, you look across and you know your neighbor's mail's piling up. No, oh, maybe maybe she's in trouble. Call, you know, anything along those lines. You pick the phone up and call, and uh, you know that's what we're here for. We're here to help you. We're here to make you feel safe, and we're here to help everyone else. So, now, yeah. There was one question over here, yes, was, which was a very good one. On, um, I have a cell phone, a track phone. Yeah. And I just have it to use if I need it, or if one of my kids wants to call me. Someone backed into my car, and a bump is locked, and I thought, well, I need to call 911. I called 911 on my track phone, and it, for some reason it didn't go through, and, I, and there was a mail truck, so I asked him to call 911. The policeman came, everything got straightened up. But now I'm kind of thinking, what good is my track phone if I can't get through the 911? Well, I don't know why it didn't work. I don't know. What happens is in cell phones, when you use cell phones to call 911, it doesn't come to Reddit. It, it, it goes directly to the state police, and then the state police will contact the Reading dispatch and will be on our way. So it's really a, like a 10 second delay. It, it's supposed to go to the state police, and then they contact us. So I don't know what happened in that time now. I keep thinking I need to try it sometime to see if it works, but I don't like to call 911 if I don't have an emergency. And well, yeah, well, that's a, you know, that's a, a very good way of looking at things. I might have an emergency, and will it work the next time? Well, if, if you come to the station sometime, That's if you'd I like to, and then we can walk through the process with you. Yeah. We'll dial 911, and when the state police call it, we'll notify them prior that we'll, this number is going to be a, a, like a test. I'm just checking it. Yeah, but it, sh it usually... I, I it, will do that sometime. Yeah, yeah we'd be more than happy to, uh, to walk through the process yeah. with you. Yeah. Thank you.
So we're here today talking about scams and also talking about basic safety information and we'll see if the officer would agree if it if it's when it comes to scams if it sounds too good to be true it probably is and when it comes to basic safety when in doubt call 911. That's correct. I remember my mother telling me when I was a, a young guy if it's if it sounds too good to be true Jimmy it is too good to be true. So the way you get ahead is you know brick by brick and you build from there so if you think you can make a quick buck over the internet or uh, on a phone scam, the chances are you can't, and not only are you not going to make money, you're probably going to lose it. So, we work too hard for our money, let's make sure it stays in our pocket, right? Any other questions for Officer Collins? Any topics, anything you want to talk about. Officer Collins, can you update them briefly on the community alerts with the, um, when we get the messages from the town saying the average system? Yes, the average the, system. The reverse 911 we call it. Mm -hmm. So say if you have a child missing, we we put it up. You know, we figure uh, you know, child's missing, you give the description, the location was last seen, uh, you know, please contact us. Because the way we look at it is the more sets of eyes trying to find a child or the better we are. And if, if you, uh, have you been following the news at all uh, about the missing girl from, yeah. from uh, Mansfield? Yeah. Yeah. From Mansfield? They found Mansfield. Found Mansfield. Found Mansfield. Found and they found her. Yeah. Right. And how did they find her? A guy was walking, driving down the street, and he saw the girl. And this guy called the, you know, the Rhode Island police, and they came down, and lo and behold, there she is. Now, she was safe and sound, and it was just a wonderful thing. But it's the same thing. You know, we, we use the media to get everyone looking for her. And what happened? This is what happened, you know, they found her because someone had recognized her, watched her walking, and called her, and she's gonna, you know, she's reunited with her parents. The man what, was from Missouri, wasn't he? That's correct, yeah. yeah. Originally, they don't know if he came from Missouri yet, or he, he, he came to Missouri and then come to Rhode Island. They don't know that they yet, don't know but. For sure, yeah. That's yeah. the internet, you know? Yes. The yeah. internet. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful tool, but it can be used for devious. You know, so. Anyone else? Well, we'd like to thank Officer Collins and thank Jane and thank the Pleasant Street Center for another series of another lunch and learn. So, thanks, everybody. I hope to see you at the Hammond B dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a bulletproof vest you're wearing? It is. It's, it's, it is so hot, I feel like I'm going to fry an egg on my head. <laughs> is it a regulation that yeah, yes, officers is. wear it yeah. while they're on duty all yeah. the time? Uh, yes. So it's, it's a good idea. Uh, it's a good idea. You yeah. know, it's just sometimes in days like this, you know, it, it becomes yeah, you have to suffer a little bit. But there's two types we are. I have the else called an outside carrier. The, a lot of the, uh, the younger guys are a little bit thinner. <laughs> they uh, wear it underneath their shirts. But this, is, this is a little bit more comfortable for me. Uh, I have a little front porch going on here, so. <laughs> I'm all set, Jane, if you are. So, you well, thank you for having me. Thank you. Very oh, good. Okay, one more question. I know that a lot of new makes of models and models of cars have uh, OnStar automatically um, part of the package when you buy them. And is that something that you guys respond to when somebody presses their OnStar inside their vehicle? Yes, I've only had it once in 28 years. It was an accident. But uh, we do respond to it uh, once, once the OnStar people call us and we go to the scene because they have the GPS and they'll tell us exactly where it is.
talking to Officer Jim Collins about scams, about basic safety stuff uh, here in Reading. The Pleasant Street Center is right off of Main Street, right in Pleasant. A lot of activities for both the seniors and for, uh, for other people, not just the senior center. 